Hey guys welcome back to our channel. So in this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto inheritance abuses sword and may Seder Fuinjutsu. This is part 3 and if you want more then please leave a like share and subscribe. Also check it out link tree in description. Let get in the video. After a month of deathly silence that seemed to permeate within the hidden leaf village, ask any one of the many citizens and they'd all tell you they were scared shitless. Why? Because of the drawn out absence of one Yuzumaki Naruto. The blonde-haired prankster that was a known menace to society had been avoiding any unnecessary contact with human life during these past few weeks, to the point where he didn't even train with Tenten or visit Eno at all. He still jogged in the mornings to condition himself, but it was always alone. And to him it was for a very good reason. Well maybe he had been taking it overboard, at least that's what he occasionally mused to himself. But he just couldn't find it in himself to face anyone while he sorted through his thoughts about what he now knew. He was far too embarrassed. Sure being left alone all your life and ostracized to the point of not really knowing what sex was was definitely not a good thing, but with what he learned it was like his entire world had turned upside down. He was a devout anti-pervert, notwithstanding his sexy jutsu and harem technique creations, and even when he had researched in order to make them more effective, it hadn't been out of lust or anything like it. He had just remembered an occasion in which some guy literally was launched away because of a prank he pulled on the hot springs. During the past month besides training he had been painfully slowly reading through Itcha Itcha the freak attack, taking in the story in butte sized pieces so as not to die from blood loss and shame. The novel had been surprisingly enrapturing, the main character being a self-taught warrior that tried to win the heart of an alcoholic woman that he had always loved. It started off so innocent, with him trying to do everything possible to capture her attention, just like he did for Sakura before. Eventually however he found that nothing he did ever worked, but in trying to impress that woman, he actually impressed many other women, who all tried to become his lovers. In the end he couldn't choose, but the woman that he loved ended up in danger, and after he saved her, she fell madly in love with him. It was just all the smut in between, and the pictures that left nothing to the imagination. He honestly didn't know what to do besides thank Kakashi Sensei for actually helping, as he actually did learn a lot, and not just sexual positions and dirty talk. Whoever wrote the book must have been a very smooth talker, as many of the conversations within held tidbits of charismatic personality in the way of seduction that Naruto wouldn't have ever thought possible. It was like if you wanted to pursue someone, then just do it. And if someone was interested in you, give them a chance. Life is short and so even if a bond was short-lived, if it ended on positive terms, then it was well worth it. Drink your sake, travel the world, meet new people, enjoy yourself. The Yuzumaki found himself wanting to read more of the critically acclaimed series, and so after buying Kakashi a new copy because of the bloodstains, Naruto ended up buying an entire box set. He didn't necessarily like all of the sexual scenes in the book, as his honest opinion of anal sex was definitely negative. But he could see the value in learning how people interacted through its enthralling storyline, and after an entire month of near seclusion, he felt he was ready to face anything, from relationships to battles of fists, blades, and justice. The month of being tutored by Jiji had been very productive, as the old man seemed to have an answer for all of Naruto's questions and ideas that he never would have thought about. A few of his accomplishments included silent smokeless clones and transformations, sealess shunshins, better cooperation with Mai his hyena summons, and being on the second level of his resistance seal, which was like having to constantly walk through thick syrup. He even had been able to use the Kubakira Bacho a little now, as the Hokage helped him develop a style based upon his own staff style. Of course it was innately different, but like the old man said he needed to use the sword's own momentum to carry it along, but this could leave openings if he spun his body too much. As a result, he had bought a weight bench and started pumping iron, as well as eating healthy while taking vitamin and protein supplements. This caused him to gain about 15 pounds of solid muscle on his upper body, and his ribsage had spread, although Jiji did recommend that he use less weight with more reps now to stay slimmer. His method would focus on both speed and strength, with immense speed and momentum from technique to increase power. He had even grown an inch putting him at 5'7", and his hair had grown a little because of his improved intake of vital nutrients. He had never felt better, and with a new take on life and unending energy due to his diet he was ready for anything. If he already was hyperactive while only eating ramen, then now he was like a juiced up junkie. As things winded down in training ground 7 the fact that Sasuke was getting ninjutsu training nearby didn't faze him whatsoever. Good for him, and Naruto after learning about the Ichiha massacre had stopped himself several times from voicing his support. It wasn't really his business, but at least he knew why the team was actually a team. His own brother had killed his entire family in front of him. That was no fucking joke. Not ever having a family Naruto couldn't really fully comprehend what it must have been like, but he definitely knew the sting of being an orphan. 
In a way they were just alike, the last of their clans with a mission to kill a powerful opponent that offended them in some way. Saw's KS situation was just a lot more personal, and Naruto found himself wishing the bastard luck sometimes. Life was too short to spend it hating the prick after all, although he never really got along with him much. But lately. Things had gotten better since Sasuke started getting trained by Kakashi, and the Ichiha never even challenged Naruto because of it. He was too busy focusing on learning what he was shown and practicing with his Sharingan, and his latest assignment certainly made Naruto weary. Not of his skill, but because he'd be keeping his Sharingan activated for weeks on end without shutting it off, essentially making him able to remember more and also gain better reflexes while increasing his reserves. Naruto didn't care much, but Sasuke had finally caught on to his constant transformation that increased his own chakra control, even if unconsciously. And so his disguise was now pretty pointless, which was why as Kakashi and Sasuke finished their spar, Naruto ended his sequence of sit-ups while hanging from a tree and dropped to the ground in a crouch, letting the transformation drop. Sakura who was nearby who was nearby eventually took notice and was instantly curious. Naruto what's with a henge if you're trying to change your look thinking I'll date you then you're more of a baka than I thought. Naruto didn't even acknowledge her and instead stared into the tree surrounding them, hearing a few people approaching at a slow pace. One of the benefits of training with Mai was that she let him know how to increase his senses with chakra, and so his already good sense of smell and hearing were further amplified, although he needed to concentrate in order to distinguish sounds. It was very difficult and he wasn't sure if he would ever master it, but at least his base ability rose. Learning most of the water justu he had while impressive wasn't that important to him yet, since what he really needed to do was become like the second Hokage and be able to use moisture in the air. That's why he had been focusing on the hidden mist jutsu as much as the Rasengan, which he was able to use with the help of a shadow clone, to use its final form. Now he had to be able to use it one-handed, and maybe he could start trying to add elemental chakra to it to complete what his father failed to do. As the visitors finally walked past the tree line making themselves visible, Naruto squinting his eyes undeniably felt a strong sense of deja vu. The tall white-clad man that had to be a Hyuga looked a bit like Niji team did, and the petite young girl by his side must have been his daughter or something. She had a pretty face, shoulder-length black hair, and the signature lavender eyes that all Hyuga were born with. 12-year-old academy student Hanabi Hyuga had admittedly been curious about this Naruto character ever since he had beaten her cousin Niji in a sanctioned spar without apparently even being hit once. Her cousin while an asshole had been hailed a genius even among Hyuga as his gentle fist was expertly executed and his eyes we considered purer than many main branch members. In fact only a precious few Hyuga had purer eyes than her and her father's and although she was three years younger than Hinata after all of her hard work, she was deemed worthy to inherit the title of clan head. She did still love her older sister, but many times she felt herself pitying her for her weakness that only brought her misery. This Naruto had been her sister's inspiration for years, which is why she hadn't just given up completely yet, but before Hanabi had written him off as just a troublemaker. But now, with her sister's long-time infatuation with him and Neji's defeat, she had been pestering her father for an entire month in order to come and meet him. And the Hyuga way of meeting someone many times involved close combat. That was Hyuga life. Naruto Uzumaki I presume? Hanabi asked as her and her father gracefully strolled to where Team 7 were gathering after their practice. Rubbing the back of his head with a disarming smile Naruto replied. Yep that's me the Leaf super awesome future Hokage and number one prankster. Hope you're not mad about a prank or something. Or is this about that Niji guy? Hanabi seemingly unaffected by his happy demeanor told him. I am Hanabi Hyuga and this is my father Hiashi Hyuga the leader of our clan. I am here because I wish to fight you and test myself against one who could defeat Niji without taking a single blow. Do you accept my challenge? What's the rules Hanabi-chan? Naruto asked a little put off about fighting such a cute and small framed girl. What were the terms of your bout with my cousin Niji? Hmm. Well jutsu were allowed but no fatal blows and I didn't use my sword so how about this? You can use your gentle fist style with the chakra strikes and even though I won't use jutsu I'll use chakra as well. It's an important part of the tojutsu I've created like it is for your Jukin after all. Everyone went wide-eyed at his words especially Sakura and Kakashi, with the pin cat immediately asking. Hey what's going in Kakashi sensei would she want to fight someone with terrible tojutsu like Naruto? Kakashi trying to put things together replied. Honestly, I wouldn't know Sakura. But. Don't you think Naruto has been acting a bit strange lately? It just may be that he's been keeping his true strength a secret, which is actually an intelligent tactic for Shinobi. Inwardly he was cursing his lack of a social life. Sure he occasionally picked up a lady or two when a new issue of Icha Icha and he was inspired, but he never really talked with his fellow shinobi, unless it was necessary. 
He had been distant like this ever since Ren and Abito passed, and he joined the Anbu, which was why he even took a Genin squad in the first place. A few of his old friends had thought it would be good for him. But it would seem that he had neglected and underestimated his sensei's son who had great potential if what the Hyuga era said was true. Now he wanted to observe and see what Naruto could really do. Sasuke watching closely with his red eyes net at Kakashi's deduction, curious himself about the boy that could be a worthy rival in gaining more power. He didn't like the fact that the girl ignored him along with her father, but since her issue was with Naruto, he just would watch and learn what he could. Anabi, restrict yourself to the basics on this occasion and try and finish as quickly as possible. Hiashi Yuga instructed her not out of disrespect for Naruto, but weariness because of Sasuke. The girl seemed to already understand as she nodded, and her and Naruto moved away from the spectators into position. As she took a stance with a determined look Naruto declared just as confident. Naruto Uzumaki of the Uzumaki clan. Shadow Hyena Tajutsu. Let's do it Databeo. Release. Seeing how he stood naturally and waited, Hanabi taking a look at her father smirked and replied. Hanabi Hyuga of the Hyuga clan. Gentle fist. Prepare yourself. Suddenly she shot forward nearly as fast as a chunin, her Byakugan activating without her even uttering a sound. Naruto flickering to the side of her nearly caught her off guard, sending a side kick aimed at her midsection, but the nimble girl spun around the blow, with her arms outstretched in two twisting strikes. But Naruto disappeared again and was already behind her, shocking everyone with his impressive speed and direct attacks. He countered with several strong hucking claw swipes that were actually strikes that would turn into grabs, something he learned from sparring with Jiji and a few of his less powerful ape summons. The hyena shadow style was actually a combination of the snow leopard tojutsu, the ape style wrestling, and inspiration from his partner Mai, who used crushing bites to end fights in one blow. This was only enhanced with the shunshin technique, which is why he worked so hard on learning to use it with no seals like many other ninja could. He just didn't tire from using it frequently, which gives him an edge into jutsu. It was still difficult to reiterate himself after appearing to immediately attack, but at least now his speed was acceptable, mostly due to the resistance seal. Which he had released before the match started. Anabi surprising him because it was still a bit weird fighting a Hyuga for him, lashed out with lightning fast fingertips, hitting his forearms while spinning beside him, all without turning around until after she struck. Then she went for a double palm finisher to his ribs, but he disappeared again beside her throwing a low kick, aiming for her thigh instead of her knee. As she responded to the kick he flickered again, this time catching her while she was a little off balance from trying to parry the low kick. Lashing out with a roundhouse to her upper arm, he struck through with and caused her to stagger a little, but she used precise chakra control to soften the forceful blow and wrapped her arm around his leg trapping it. Naruto seeing he was caught by the smaller girl somehow, knew he was in trouble if he didn't get away fast, and jumping up just as her free hand struck out, he kicked off of her while taking a hit to the thigh, and he backflipped crisply but staggered from the pain in his leg. Damn gentle fist was painful. Anabi using her chakra to absorb the kick, plant herself firmly, and burst forward, nearly finished the blonde with five swift palms that came in a flurry aimed at his torso, but he flickered at the last second a little delayed because of the sealed tenketsu point in his leg. Thankfully his chakra was rather powerful, or he may not have been able. Reappearing behind her and then flickering again, he appeared to the side of her and jumped into two spinning side kicks, using both his legs in the same attack trying to overwhelm her. But she was no novice in tojutsu, and rolling to the side she rose exploding into a series of palm strikes that came directly at Naruto's exposed side as he turned to parry the blows. He managed to stop the first three, but the pain of the chakra entering his hands and wrist caused his defense to falter, and in a last-ditch effort, he tried to catch her with a jumping knee strike. She just twisted her body around the blow, and this time the double palm struck true hitting him in his shoulder and sending him to the ground in a heap. He didn't give up so easily though, and rising while kicking out with his leg he tried and failed to use a flicker again to his astonishment. Hanabi confidently awaiting him just moved to the side when leapt into a hammer fist, his leg low roundhouse kicking at the same time. Lifting up her leg as the kick went under it, Hanabi caught Naruto with two more palm strikes that, but his lower ribs edge and upper back, causing him to grunt in pain and stagger some more. But no matter what he wouldn't give up or fold. That's when Kakashi stepped in, and he Ashi had been about to do the same if he took any more attacks. Naruto that's enough. You did well, but as of now this spar is over. Hanabi Hyuga is the winner. Anabi beaming stood triumphantly and told him. Your skill was decent, but I don't see how you defeated Niji. Is your specialty Tejutsu Uzumaki-san? Just Naruto K. And nah, but Tejutsu is what I'm focusing on right now Hanabi Haim. Let's have a rematch sometime K, and I gotta say you're way stronger than you look. Believe it. But I'll be stronger than you before you know it. I have to be if I'm gonna be Hokage. Naruto declared smiling brightly despite his loss. 
Bulhanabi was a petite girl and that didn't make him happy he lost, the fact that she was the Hyuga head's daughter must have meant that she had been one of the better fighters in their family. She had to have had the best instructors, if not her father himself after all. Plus he felt he had done pretty well, although he hadn't used the chakra shield because he wasn't experienced enough with it yet. He honestly had been focusing more on the Rasengan and water manipulation, but now he saw the need for a better defense. He definitely wanted to face Hanabi again really soon though, since if he could beat a Hyuga with Tejutsu alone, then it'd mean he had certainly gotten much better. Hanabi don't know why, but the smile and determined look in his eyes as he talked to her caused her to feel something she had never experienced before. It was like her heart was stuttering and her stomach was loopy, but what could it have been? An effect of his Tejutsu? All she knew was that she wanted a proper rematch, since he had essentially been handicapped for the sake of improving his Tejutsu style. She was interested in seeing the full spectrum of his ability. I accept your challenge Naruto-san, and I thank you for your kind words. We'll just have to see if you can back that claim up, but know that the Hyuga are the strongest. I wish you farewell, as I must resume my training. I'll see you later. But that Hanabi and her father left training ground 7, and after hobbling over to his favorite tree Naruto knew the inevitable questioning would come as his team followed behind him. What was that Tejutsu loser, and how's you get so fast? What is this Yuzumaki clan, I thought you were an orphan. I am an orphan, and as far as my speed and Tejutsu goes that's a secret. It's not like you'd tell me everything about your Ichiha Tejutsu would you besides, the Ichiha and Yuzumaki clans are old rivals, so it'd look bad if you learned my stuff anyway. Or have you lost your Ichiha pride? While it was actually a truth Naruto spoke about the old rivalry, he was actually using his words to manipulate the boy into not copying him. And it worked perfectly. Rivalry, what rivalry? I've never even heard of an Yuzumaki clan, so. That's because the Yuzumaki clan were destroyed Sasuke and by two of the great nations nonetheless. They were too powerful for their own good, and Kumo and I will launch a surprise attack. Only a few survived, and the remnants of his clan were spread around the nations in hiding. Remember how I said Naruto has much more chakra than even me, well it's an Yuzumaki thing. Bakashi explained already knowing what was going to happen. Naruto seemed to invite it however, and the boy's using pride was a good way to keep his techniques. His. Fight me. Naruto Yuzumaki. Let's see which clan is superior. Sasuke challenged with a serious look in his red eyes. Sure thing Sasuke Ichiha, but let me rest first, that gentle fist hurts like hell. Tomorrow. HN. As Naruto sat breathing air in and out using the abdominal breathing method to meditate, he noticed that none of his team had moved even after Sasuke had challenged him, and he accepted. His body stung on the damned inside as if slim kunai had been impaled within, and as he concentrated hoping to will the sensation to fade, it was Sakura who spoke. So had all of this been an act the entire time. Asking me on dates, acting goofy and weak, when you're really strong. Playing the fool. Tuckling as he decided he wanted to stand Naruto rose saying. Maybe. But what does it matter? We're ninja and we rely on stealth and deception, just like Akashi told me in Wave. All you really need to know about me is that I'll always protect you Sakura, and even you Sasuke. And I'll be the greatest Hokage that ever lived. Believe it. Sakura blushed because of the look in his eyes as he spoke, it was like he was speaking directly to her spirit self. His eyes pierced into her very soul as before he gave her a confident smirk, and for the first time ever, she doubted that Sasuke could win. It was because of this inconceivable thought that her brain momentarily shut down, and she was speechless not even hearing what Naruto said next. What did you say? She asked more than a little confused. Dust I you wanna train later. I mean not like a date, but just so we can get stronger and be a better team. Never know when another's abuser may pop up and try to slice our heads off Databeo. Sakura could only dumbly nod at his troubling words, as her lack of skill slammed into her once more, just like it had on the bridge. She wasn't able to do anything at all, but maybe Naruto could help. He was offering to after all, and from what she saw he was actually pretty strong. She knew things probably would have been different if he had used clones like she saw before. But then she remembered. Sasuke. Um, Sasuke-kun will you train with me, she asked hopefully with a pleading look like she was trying to prove herself. Just let the dope train you so you won't be dead weight. I have better things to do, but if you want to be useful then use that chakra control of yours and study Jinjutsu. Then at least you won't hold us back. He coolly replied with a blank look. It was like he was looking right through her, but Sakura could only promise she'd get better and hope he'd notice her then. He had just talked to her the most he ever had, and he seemed to almost be expectantly ordering her. She'd be damned if she let him down. She's not dead weight team, but you're right she does have two notch chakra control. Hey I have a few books on Jinjutsu I can lend you Sakura, and now that I think about it, I have a few swords you can have. I bet you could combine Ken and Jinjutsu and be pretty badass. 
Then Team 7 will be unstoppable. Naruto exclaimed getting all kinds of good ideas. HN. He's right, with a sword you won't have to worry about strength so much just technique. And with Jinjutsu you can set the pace or support us, with the blade to protect you I'm close combat. Blushing and nodding at both her teammates encouraging words, the pincat inwardly vowed to get stronger, if only so she could close the gap between them. Kakashi who was eyeing her closely, seemed to pick up on her newfound determination and added I smiling. Well it would seem you three finally understand the meaning of teamwork. I'll help you with a kinjutsu scroll Sakura, and while I can't show you any Jinjutsu I'll be sure I have a water clone for you to spar with daily. Maybe with your advanced chakra control, you can learn elemental manipulation to enhance your kinjutsu. In fact I'm sure you can. Sakura beaming at Kakashi's support, failed to notice Naruto's grimace, as silence fell once more. The Msaz came net as usual and began walking away with his hands in his pockets, but not before saying. Rest well Yuzumaki, because tomorrow the Achiha will prove victorious. We'll see Sasuke, just don't underestimate again you here, or you'll be really sorry you did. If the Ichiha heard he gave no indication as he walked into the trees, and Naruto had already begun considering what he would reveal during their match. He decided to use techniques that couldn't be copied, like his bamboo style he had been working on. While it mostly relied in trap making, he still had a few direct combat applications and even defensive techniques. It was actually the bamboo he may have been working on most of all, since it was his and his alone in his mind. He had thought I'd the good idea, and so every techniques he made was his creation, which he was very proud about. He would never just love in his father's shadow, especially when he was shadow. The other thing besides kinjutsu, ninjutsu, and tijutsu he had been working on was of course fuinjutsu, but that was going so much slower than everything else. While he was learning and understanding the art his lack of decent handwriting proved to be his undoing, and so instead of just meditating like Haku suggested he practiced calligraphy. It was very frustrating to be able to actually understand sealing naturally somehow, but be unable to draw any seals. Not even near the required perfection at that. And he had so many ideas too. So. Naruto how long have you known about your clan? And why hide your skill from us, I mean I understand hiding it from others, but we're your team. You should trust us more. Kakashi stated wondering what the blonde's response would be. What he didn't expect was the boy's look of anger as he replied. The better question is why you never bothered to help me, especially considering who your sensei was. Don't get me wrong I can't say I really care so much now, I've got other people I care about and a great teacher. But you could have left a scroll or something, but I guess you were too busy mourning. Right sensei. Bakashi staggered back as if stuck forcefully as shame overwhelmed him not for the first time, and he could see his sensei's calculating eyes through Naruto's fierce serious expression. He never expected Naruto to know of his father and who was this teacher the boy had. He knew he had failed badly, but what if Naruto's teacher was someone with malicious intent? He couldn't forgive himself if Naruto left the village due to his neglect, and as Sakura looked back and forth between the two of them worried he answered. When. Sensei died. I I ran and buried myself in work trying to forget about everything. I was there. The night they died. And I couldn't protect them from that man. That masked man took both of them away from us, and after that. I just couldn't ever bring myself around to. I'm sorry Naruto. And even still after this team was made, what about then? What about the times when you could have just handed me a scroll? I'm not gonna walk around crying like a bitch about it, but never act like you're my family. You left me alone like the others, and the only thing you've done in all these years is help me last month. That's the only reason I don't hate you Kakashi. Akashi's eye actually began watering a little bit before he flickered away to the memorial stone, and Naruto for a brief microsecond felt a twinge of guilt before his expression hardened again. When the old man let Naruto know what happened the night he was born and how his wife had been killed while his mom was delivering him, he had inevitably learned about Kakashi and his relationship to his father the fourth. The old man actually had an excuse and was rectifying his mistakes at least. But Kakashi. He just played it cool like everything was fine and tried to act like he was the pinnacle of what teamwork was in essence. If he hadn't said that abandoned comrades worse than trash thing Naruto may have been more sympathetic, but when he learned that a few weeks back he had come to somewhat loathe Kakashi. Fucking hypocrite. Still, things had been going so well that he had remained silent, constantly conditioning himself, while Sasuke received his private tutelage. Naruto didn't want to learn from Kakashi anymore, in fact he didn't even need to. Even when the Hokage stopped training him in a week, he had everything he needed to be great already. Of course it wasn't safe for the old man to be splitting his chakra so many times using shadow clones when he had to protect the village, Naruto knew that. He wanted to make his own way anyways, although the old man did say he'd introduce him to a kinjutsu expert that could help him part-time once a week. He was looking forward to that. Naruto what was all that about with Kakashi-sensei, he knew your family or something. 
Sakura asked curious and confused feeling very out of place. Don't worry about it Sakura-chan, let's get out of here so I can give you those books and a sword. We'll be the best in the village, and you better believe it. Glad to see his usual fiery attitude, Sakura blushed a bit and nodded her head, letting him take the lead before she noticed something lying on the ground. Hey Naruto I didn't know you used war fans. She said unfolding the ornate weapons of steel curving blades. It was dark blue in color, just like. That's not mine, I think it might be the team's. Might as well leave it though. He'll find it tomorrow if he doesn't come back for it. Naruto suggested wanting to keep moving. If Sasuke didn't care then he didn't either. No let's take it to him, I know where he lives. She retorted looking excitedly at Naruto who just shrugged saying. Alright but let's make it fast. I have to get back to training my body and I have to water my plants after that. Then maybe I can finish in time to go out tonight. Sakura beaming asked him as they walked together with him putting his hood up. I didn't know you had plants. I never thought you the type, but I guess I never really got to know you did I? I just want to say thanks for helping me Naruto, Sasuke even noticed me today. Pulling out a storage scroll Naruto said. Nah, no thanks necessary Sakura-chan. Just making sure you can protect yourself I guess, and what are teammates for right? There's a lot you don't know about me, and I get the feeling there's more to you than liking Sasuke. So. How about a fresh start? Taking his outstretched hand shaking to his proposal, Sakura beamed at her new friend who she was admittedly curious about. Naruto had stopped asking her in dates a while ago, and weirdly in the pit of her stomach, she had started feeling empty and unwanted after that. Especially every time Sasuke rejected or ignored her advances. Then there was his new appearance, which she had to admit made him very attractive and even cool looking. Not as attractive or cool as Sasuke, but still. Naruto is that sake Sakura exclaimed as the blonde unsealed a bottle that looked a lot like alcohol. She couldn't believe it, what was next? Yeah you want some? He asked nonchalantly after taking a large gulp. Honey sake was the best. No you baka you can't drink give it here now. She yelled trying and failing to snatch it, while Naruto weaved around he laughing and taunting her. Ha her I didn't let you kill my buzz, no thanks Haim. He laughed before guzzling more down and dodging an angry storm of swings. Naruto had begun drinking quite a bit ever since Kurenai introduced him to honey rice wine, and he even had a full cabinet completely stocked with reserves. It helped him relax after training, and it also made Icha Icha much better to read. Not to mention when he snuck some into the new Princess Gale movie. Kami she was so so hot. Her give anything just to have 5 minutes alone with her, and there was even a teaser about an Icha Icha movie being produced sometime in the future. He was definitely their opening night. After about an hour's walk Naruto and Sakura finally made it to the Ichiha district, which happened to be very close to Naruto's three houses. The blonde being more than tipsy decided, asked Sakura to point out his house, and the pink eye eventually did as they rounded another corner. Smirking at her foolishness, Naruto flickered away already opening his front door which happened to be unlocked, looking forward to sneaking up on the bastard and one-upping him for fun. His simple prank would never come to be however, but Naruto did get something up. As he appeared almost silently in the same area that Sasuke was getting undressed in, his jaw crashed into the hardwood flooring harder than guy's leg weights would have. And for a good reason. As the Ichiha turned and observed her white-clad teammate and rival, all she could do was stare emotionless for a moment that seemed to last for eternity, as his face turned into something redder than a tomato, which was her favorite food. Then the gravity of the situation hit her. Naruto had found out. Naruto had found out. As Naruto just gaped like a fish out of water at the slim yet slightly curved form of Sasuke, the first thing that came to mind was just how gorgeous she was. While her breasts weren't very large, they seemed to fit her lithe body perfectly, and her red eyes and black hair that was in a spiky ponytail reminded him of Kurenai and that Anko lady combined. Naruto always wondered why Sasuke smelled kind of like the other girls in the academy, but it never occurred to him that this was why. It would seem Naruto wasn't the only one who had hidden secrets, and he was instantly reminded of Haku by this entire situation. And then she was in front of him, in his face no less. Naruto what the fuck are you doing here don't tell any fucking body you here. He didn't exactly know why he did it, but maybe it was because he thought back to the time he kissed Sasuke, although that was an accident. Or maybe the honey sake he had just drank. It just suddenly hit him that he had actually kissed this girl, and when she started yelling and got all close, he just moved without thinking about it. And now their lips were locked, Naruto watching her closely to see what she would do. And then her entire body relaxed, and she leaned forward returning at full force all of a sudden. Wrapping his arms around her and sticking his tongue in her mouth, Naruto had a feeling it was itcha time. Itcha itcha time. Suddenly getting aggressive Naruto attacked her neck, loving her moans as she grabbed his hair tightly, and their tongues collided. 
Then his diamond hard member pressed into her as he subconsciously humped her a little. And everything seemed to just go with the flow, as her boxers slid off while he groped her through the blue chair shirt she was wearing. His pants somehow already down, he fell on top of her on the couch that was nearby still making out and lining his length up getting ready to enter. And just like that the two rivals had become one just as Sakura walked in the room. The pinkette's mind couldn't handle what was witnessed and so she just slumped to the ground rather enough unceremoniously, unconscious. Neither of them seemed to notice or maybe they just didn't care, but after almost 10 minutes of steamy sex, Naruto felt like exploding. When he had first entered it was so tight and moist, he nearly lost himself immediately. But hearing the pained moan he remembered to let her adjust, and after she started grinding into him a little he began thrusting deeply into her. He loved the feeling of their skin rubbing together and the body heat that was produced, their sweat sickening their bodies as he increased his pace. He didn't stop making out with her even once, for the first time appreciating the red eyes of the Sharingan whenever their lustful gaze met. Then he cupped her small breast in his hand, somehow knowing that if he used the first stage of the Rasengan to massage the orb, she would melt from his touch. Neither of them were disappointed, as she screamed in pleasure with her nails digging into his back as she came for the third time. That was when it happened. Naruto felt the intensifying warmth in his lower region that seemed grow as he finally broke the kiss, grabbing her head and plying into her as he began to feel lightheaded. His eyes glazed over as he plunged rapidly, not letting her body move much, the slapping sound of their flesh music to his ears. His legs started feeling like jelly as the warmth kept spreading up towards the top of his shaft and she somehow had presence of mind to notice. Ugh. Ugh. Naruto. What are you? Don't kum. In. She was already too late by the time she said kum, as with a mighty roar the Yuzumaki exploded within her releasing a torrent of his seed directly into her womb as he twitched and hilted himself firmly inside. Her honey-smooth voice moaned in unison with his as she came again from the feeling, but after a moment a look of intense rage replaced her previous expression. The blonde extremely confused as he was pushed off of her forcefully as she rose up looking furious, he winced when she screamed at him. What the hell you came in me you fucking loser. Guo. Get out and don't come back. Naruto could only just stand there shocked at everything before he registered what she had tried to tell him and he realized what he had actually done. He could have just gotten her pregnant and therefore endanger her ambition to kill her brother. It was with this that a numb blonde just got dressed and took Sakura to his house in a flicker, his mind still blank as he was still amazed at what had just happened. Shit had just hit the fan it seems. Tsutsuki Ichiha couldn't believe what had just happened earlier and was still wondering why she even returned that kiss in the first place. Naruto Uzumaki had to be the most annoying, loud, stubborn, childish, hyperactive person she had ever met in her life and yet somehow she had feelings for him. She would have vehemently denied that fact before the bridge battle in the Land of Waves, but after that it had become apparent. What other conclusion could she have come to, besides the one that was her affection for the blonde knucklehead? As many faults that she thought Naruto had he had just as many strengths. He was determined, ambitious, amusing, exotic, and he never seemed to have those shadows in his eyes that she saw from so many others. The shadows of pity, lies, jealousy, and vain apathy that she hated so much. She had seen them all her life. But Naruto, he was truthful. You got what you saw, and after what she saw today she knew he had actually been a capable shinobi. If he used shadow clones in conjunction with that style of his, then she knew she'd even be hard pressed to win tomorrow when they fought. And it was exciting. Finally she could test herself against him without holding back, and his charade had come to an end. When she had gotten home she didn't even go and train like she usually did, but instead she went and searched the Ichiha archives for any information about the Yuzumaki clan. She had literally found a ton of it, written about different encounters in extreme detail. The sealing masters were notoriously hard to fight for the Ichiha, as their renowned Sharingan couldn't simply copy few injutsu techniques, and the Yuzumaki willpower made quite a few hypnoticai techniques obsolete. Add in chakra chains, multiple summoning, and unique weaponry, and the Yuzumaki clan were the Ichiha's only equals. Even the legendary Azuna Ichiha wrote of two close encounters where he nearly died from an Yuzumaki. After reading a bit she decided to go and shower after dropping her transformation, which was actually a special seal that constantly kept it going if need be. It was an Achiha tradition after all, for a girl to hide her gender until she met her arranged spouse. This was also a defense against potential kidnappings, since many female bloodline holders were often captured for the sole purpose of bearing children, due to females usually being weaker than males. It was very ironic that Naruto had walked in on her right after she changed, because what happened afterward was the same thing that happened traditionally within the clan. The engagement was sealed with the bride losing her virginity. Maybe she could have dealt with having a secret relationship with her only real friend, but what he did to her was unacceptable. 
she could still feel him moving inside her, and even when she used careful chakra control to rid herself of his seat by force, that feeling didn't go away. It was like Naruto had marked her, and now she belonged to him or something. And it made her feel conflicted. So conflicted. On one hand he would probably be the perfect person for her, and their undeniable attraction would most likely always remain as strong as steel. On the other hand it terrified her to the core, the thought of Tachi coming and killing Naruto, and their child. She was an Avenger, and she couldn't rest until she achieved her ambition. Being with Naruto came with too many strings and feelings that weren't a hatred she held so dear, things that would distract her. She'd get complacent, and eventually Itachi would come. She was sure of it. She couldn't lose anyone ever again, and Naruto was the one person she cared for the most. Even at the cost of her own life. It was unacceptable. Now finished washing with a sigh of exasperation, she exited her shower, for the first time in years truly shaken to the core. What would happen now? It was too late to go back, and everything had changed within the span of a few moments. It was funny how life was like that. Meanwhile Naruto's PLAC. Already done with a five-minute wash-up after his first time with the Achiha, Naruto didn't know what the hell to think. He knew he had messed up, but everything had just happened so fast it was was a large part of him that wanted to go back, but his fear of being rejected kept him from it. He had heard what she said loud and clear, so at the very least he'd give her space. He could still the, the hateful look in her beautiful red eyes as she yelled at him, and he just couldn't get it out of his head. After drying off and getting dressed again, Naruto knowing Sakura may be awake went downstairs just in time to see her eyes fluttering a little, and quietly making a clone he watched it as it went and prepared some tea for them. He needed to relax, and tea was great for that. He may have still been a little more than tipsy, but he was far from calm. Remembering his offer and not wanting Sakura around any more than necessary, Naruto went and got the two Jinjutsu books he had, and decided that the teal blue Kadachi sword would probably fit her right. It may have been a shorter sword without a TSUBA guard, but he thought that may in fact make her rely on skill more so than length, and it wasn't like she was the strongest fighter around to be swinging around a heavier blade. After he got what he needed he found that she was in fact just waking up and had been about to question his clone in the kitchen, and he waited for the inevitable shitstorm that was about to occur. And then it never came. Naruto. Where are we in Sasuke's house? What? Happened? Actually this is my house Akurichan, and I was just getting your sword and stuff ready for you. Here you go by the way. Let it be said again that the human mind was a ponderous thing with many defensive mechanisms to avoid mental trauma, and this was seen when Sakura just nodded dumbly and accepted the gifts with a peculiar look. Naruto had been waiting for her to attack, scream, question him, anything other than blush at him. And then he realized why. He hadn't put his cloak back on yet, as he normally never wore it indoors. This gave Sakura a nice view of his new rippling muscles and black Anbu attire, and he could have swore he saw some drool escape from the corner of her mouth for a second. And then she suddenly realized what she was doing and quickly told him. Thanks again so much for helping me Naruto-kun, but I'm going to go now and start studying alright. I really appreciate it and I won't let you down. I'll see you tomorrow okay. Naruto nodding to her then got an interesting idea and asked her. Her Sakura do you know what Shunshin is? No but isn't it an ninjutsu or something? Yeah, but it lets you use chakra to make yourself fast enough that you nearly teleport. Let me give you a scroll for it before you leave, and I want you to learn it and focus on being able to use it a lot. When you start your sword training you should make it a key technique you use. And so Naruto gave her the body flicker scroll, and demonstrated the technique to her by surprisingly flickering her way into the food district of the village, offering to buy her lunch which she declined. But not before glomping him on the head feeling elated he asked her on another date. Honestly he had just been being polite, but it didn't matter. All he could think about for the rest of the day was the upcoming fight with the girl he lost his virginity to. The next day why? It was an unnaturally chill morning in the Leaf Village, and arriving at Team 7's training ground five hours earlier than Kakashi time Naruto Uzumaki was truly nervous. He hadn't been able to sleep much at all, what with all his thinking of a certain female Ichiha and their relationship. And so he had just ended up walking two hours earlier than the appointed time, which was three hours earlier than Kakashi time. But surprisingly, Sasuke was already there, looking more than a little uncomfortable. As their eyes net in the dim morning light as the sun started to rise, the silence actually seemed to be a sound itself, or maybe it was the tension that was so thick. They just started at each other for a while, almost as if waiting and wondering what the other would say. Then Naruto spoke up not being able to take the awkwardness any longer. Saz. Tsutsuki. The raven-haired Ichiha corrected him wearing her male form with a convincing voice to match. It was amazing how different the sound was, and Naruto loved her real voice so much. Tsutsuki. I'm. Sorry for yesterday. You're the most beautiful thing I've ever seen, and I I want to be with you. 
Naruto told her deciding to just put the cards on the table from the start. If the shifting posture was any indication his unusually quiet voice was heard loud and clear, and then Satsuki said in a monotone voice. Is that how you feel about me? Even knowing that my ambition is to kill, not to protect like yours is. Naruto having thought deeply about it all day already had an answer and told her. Satsuki. It doesn't matter to me. Because. I have someone to kill too. Someone who deserves to die, just like Itachi. It doesn't matter because. I love you. The Ichiha actually stumbled as if struck physically, red eyes widening in fear and confusion. Then the silence was thick again, and the conflicted look turned into one of pure unadulterated hatred when she spat with venom. If that's true then. You'll come at me with everything that you have. And then she was upon him, rushing forward at formerly unseen speeds, as her Sharingan blared with a look of forced conviction. Naruto for all his training could only dodge the barrage of jumping kicks, and when Satsuki sprung forth into a crescent kick, he flickered away looking very distraught. Reappearing a little ways away, he flinched when she coldly said. You don't love me. You don't understand me. I hate you Naruto Uzumaki. Satsuki I can help you. Please let me love you. Please. We can kill Itachi together. The look of utter terror distorted her male face, and Naruto hoped to Kami she'd let him close to her. It may have been soon to say he loved her before, but there was no other way to describe the feeling. None at all. Her fearful eyes hardened suddenly and contrasted drastically with his watery hope-filled sapphire eyes in the morning sunlight. Both the moon and the sun were in the sky at once, as if this moment had been predestined by the heavens themselves. Naruto saw the conflict, he somehow knew what was happening inside of her heart. She was either going to shun him completely or let him become the live of her life. And then it happened. Going through hand seals with watery hate-filled eyes, Satsuki yelled in rage. Fire style, phoenix flower jutsu. Unleashing a barrage of basketball-sized fireballs at the Yuzumaki, Satsuki watched closely as the boy flickered in and out between them, and she'd never forget the look of hesitancy and fear in all her life. But her mind had been made up, and predicting his movement because of a pattern she noticed she flickered at just the right moment, hooking him in his jaw and jumping up double-kicking him and flipping backward. Throwing a brace of shuriken at him, she watched with her anger growing as he flickered away again, tears threatening to fall from both of their eyes. Stop running and fight me Naruto. She spat and in her anger she weaved through hand seals again, unleashing a massive fireball that was amplified from her unstable emotional state. Then she watched in terror as it approached him and appeared to hit, but her expression changed when she saw what happened next. The cluster of bamboo stalks sprung from the earth, blocking the fireball completely as Naruto dashed away when it overcame the defense. But he didn't get the satisfaction he thought he would have when he saw her face, not it was exactly the opposite. He couldn't bring himself to fight her at all, and her face twisted into the most hate-filled expression he had ever seen in his entire life. Why couldn't she just love him back? Had Itachi really fucked her up that bad he would soon get his answer. Indisputably. As her hands moved fast enough to appear a single movement, lightning began crackling around her knife hand, sounding like a thousand birds chirping as she clutched her wrist with her other hand. The blinding light from the justu seemed to accentuate the rage in her eyes, and crouching down, she disappeared in a blazing shunshun of fire. Naruto couldn't move at all, he didn't know why, but his body felt like lead. He was exhausted more so than he had ever been, but he was sure it wasn't because of chakra depletion. No, it was his stress, and he only managed a barrier of thick bamboo with a weak chakra shield as she reappeared in flames thrusting forward. And then he heard it. The sound of splintering wood fracturing and giving to the Chidori, and he only moved at the last second as the assassination technique burst through the bamboo and his chakra, narrowly missing his heart as the electrified hand entered his body with a squelching sound. The last thought he had as he faded from consciousness was how ironic everything was. He had penetrated Satsuki, and now it seemed he himself was penetrated. Only the smallest chuckle escaped his mouth before blood was coughed up, and he closed his eyes as the stunned Ichiha stumbled back horrified at what she had done. Naruto had stopped breathing, and her mind kept replaying his words from earlier, as her red eyes morphed and evolved. Because. I love you. Let me help you. Please let me love you. We can kill Itachi together. The twelve-point star appeared, just as she vomited up everything she had eaten the night before, and she felt the rush of power that she had never experienced before. She knew what she had done. She knew what had just happened. She had killed Naruto. Her best friend. Her rival. Her. Love. No 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 no. I'm not like him. I didn't mean. I can't. How? Naruto Naruto. Sprinting away at full speed toward the village gates, tears fell and they never ceased. They would never stop, even for the weeks of hardship that the Avenger would be faced with. That day Satsuki Ichiha had left the leaf village, her manjekyo Sharingan spinning like a shuriken, as the occasional drop of blood intermingled with her salty tears. Five days L.A.T.R. 
waking up to see nothing but white for what could have been the thousandth time in his pain-filled life. Naruto Uzumaki grimaced as his memories of Satsuki and meeting the fox dominated his thoughts. Rising up from his hospital bed with a grimace, he was surprised to see Sakura of all people, along with Kakashi nearby resting. Both of them looked like they hadn't been home even once in weeks, and they smelled like it too. Then Kakashi opened his eye wearily, and Naruto was instantly shaking him asking. Sat Sasuke where is Sasuke? S left the village Naruto. He's betrayed the village and is a missing nin now. Are you? But Naruto wasn't even in the hospital room anymore, as he flickered away to see the one person that could help him. Well well look what we got here boys. Bam she's sexy, I bet when we're through with her she'll make us a fortune. He. After we're through with her that is. As Satsuki continued moving heading to the north, she had her previous identity and instead appeared how she really looked, a slim attractive female with long hair pulled into a spiky ponytail. The only real difference were her clothes, which consisted of all black shorts and a black top and black fingerless gloves. Her hair was also white now and she thought it a good idea to look as different as possible. It wouldn't keep the Inuzuka from sniffing her out, but at least she wouldn't be identified her appearance alone. There wasn't even a chance of it. Her rush journey had brought her into a few different villages the past week, and even though she had never stopped thinking of Naruto, she still forced Idich's image to overlap the lasting image of Naruto's final moments before he died by her hand. She had killed him and his dreams, and had she not needed the sustenance she wouldn't have stolen the various goods she required whenever the opportunity arose. She hadn't had an appetite ever since her hand had plunged into his chest, feeling the inside of his bleeding body before it became a corpse. And now here she was, in front of a group of five bandits, all armed with worn swords and rusty tantos. Maybe had she not have been so messed up at the moment things would have gone differently. But unfortunately for them, she was completely screwed in the head, and now there was nothing for her. Nothing but Itachi. As her eyes squinted in absolute hate at the fools who opposed her, she didn't even lift a finger as she felt the power flow within her, all throughout her body as it popped behind her new eyes. And then everything in of her burned. Black flames seemed to manifest from nothingness as the entire group was engulfed by hell's fire, and nothing was left of them. Not even the ashes of their useless remains. Even the air itself burned as she beheld her new power, just before a wave of fatigue crashed into her, and searing pain behind her eyes caused her to stagger and hold her right eye. This power. It came at a cost it seemed, but it was what she had needed. It was the last thing she had attained from her one true love, Naruto Uzumaki. As she continued forward with her eyes burning with insanity and hate, she kept up her recent activity of speculating how to find Itachi. How did you find someone who had evaded the hunters for so long, someone with no trail? The only thing she could think of was to make him come to her. But. How. Lost in thought about the only thing worth living for in her life, tears once again began falling as she shut her eyes, trying to will away the image of Naruto Uzumaki. His smile. His laugh. His. Confession. And her hand. The last chuckle, before he hacked up blood and closed his eyes. Before he betrayed her by dying so easily. And the tears fell, as the unceasing liquid kept running down her tired face as she continued forward. Always forward. In K-O-N-O-H-A. If there was one single word that Naruto could have used to describe how he had been feeling the two days since he had seen the Hokage, it'd be depressed. Sure, what was important was that he managed to save Satsuki from being a missing nin, by placing the blame on himself, telling the old man that Ichi Satsuki had simply panicked. He lied, saying that he used a chakra absorption seal on his barrier and tried to release the jutsu back, but it backfired. Actually a genius explanation, but it didn't stop the fact that the root as Jiji told him, will search for her regardless. And if she was found, then she most likely would never be seen again. Not by him. It was these past couple days that Naruto's clones had scoured most of Fire Country, quite literally. The Crow transformation and Tajuu Kage Bunshin technique combined gave him nearly unlimited spying ability, even if he lacked experience, and it didn't matter to Naruto that his training had suffered. He was worried sick. It was so bad that he didn't even report back to Kakashi yet and had instead been binge drinking like an alcoholic the last few days. He didn't even want to go to his team meeting later on today. Itcha Itcha didn't help, watching kung fu movies on his flat screen didn't help, even Raymond didn't comfort him as much as it used to. No, he had just been in a drunken daze, a slump of self-loathing and waiting like some housewife for any sign of Satsuki to be found by his airborne scouts. And they found nothing. The only thing he did do was meet the old man for his lessons in the morning, which would be coming to an end in about three days. But that was alright, because then he'd get a top-notch kenjutsu instructor. Smelling himself and deciding he had went without showering long enough, the blonde quickly entered and washed himself, although halfway he was forced to exit from someone knocking on his door. 
instead of making a clone, he quickly dried off and dressed himself using Shunshin to finish in less than 30 seconds, and answering the front door he was surprised by who it was. He honestly had been expecting Kurenai, Kiba, or the Hokage. Um? Hey Hanabi-chan. What's up, and how'd you find out where I live? Naruto asked a little tired. Hanabi just pointing to her eyes replied. Hello Naruto-kun, I found you with my all-seeing eyes of course. I have come here to inform you of my early graduation from the Ninja Academy, as I have been placed upon your team at my father's behest. It's really quite surprising, isn't it? Naruto's eyes widening in recognition, replied with a small forced smile. That's great Hanabi-chan, I'm happy that you've graduated. Do you want to come in, I'll make us some tea. Smiling at the boy she had recently realized she likes a lot, Hanabi entered his home taking her sandals off and lined them up neatly near the door. Honestly she had found his house after spying on her sister, who was spying on Naruto from around the corner. She of course had heard of the Achiha incident, in which Naruto apparently was gravely injured from fighting his teammate. What was a new experience for her was the utter worry she felt, which had replaced the warm bubbly feeling she got whenever she thought about him. And for some reason, she thought about him all the time. After a while she asked her sister what it meant, and the shy girl smiled gently at her and explained everything that it meant. That a boy had captured her heart and that she should become a person that they could respect and cherish back. What Hanabi doubted was that Hanada would have said that if she knew just who it was she was talking about. And just earlier today, after a council meeting in which Hanaba's father vouched for her since Team 7 needed a replacement for the Ichiha, she had graduated early to be the new squad member. It was perfect. Hanabi couldn't help but stare at the blonde's broad back, remembering seeing him through the thick bamboo in his backyard swimming. Naruto was certainly attractive to her, and now that she was close to him that warm feeling in her stomach began to heat up, but she kept her composure. She was honestly impressed by his home, as she saw that it was very nice and neat with an interesting color scheme. He seemed to like orange watercolor paintings and sunflowers paintings as well, and he had many different kinds of plants and flowers all around, many of which were in ornate china vases. His white couch was nice, and his television set was a new model, and she could smell the scent of air freshener, although she was unsure what kind. After a few minutes of clanging in which Naruto prepared the tea himself and walked to wine cabinet, Hanabi sat patiently on the couch as he told her she could, and when he finally came over and plopped down next to her, she was a bit taken aback. Naruto-kun is that sake you have. Yeah, but it's not a big deal. I'm almost 16 and old enough to kill then old enough to feel a buzz right he answered mirroring Kurine's words. Anabi just hesitantly nodded before Naruto got a smirk on his face and he poured her a saucer of the honey wine before declaring. Alright if it's cool with you let's toast to being teammates and protecting one another always. We'll get so strong they'll have to promote us straight to elite jonin by a year's time. This time his smile was genuine, although it slipped a little at the mention of protecting one another, and Hanabi had to assume he was thinking of his old teammate. She was correct. Grabbing her saucer not wanting to be rude to the boy she liked and wanting to seem mature to him for some odd reason she said. Thank you Naruto-kun. I toast to all of that and let me add that we become the best of friends. Their saucers clanged against each other's and they both downed them in one gulp and Hanabi was mesmerized by the strong yet sweet and succulent taste. This was actually why Naruto loved honey wine so much, he hated the bitter stuff, but this wasn't too sweet like a few others he had tasted. Naruto. May I'll have another? She asked a little hesitant not wanting him to judge her. She was shocked when he laughed heartily and patted her on the back, finally letting old personality through saying. I think I'm gonna like you Hanabi-chan. Have as much as you like and don't worry about it. I have tons of the stuff it's my favorite after all. You still want some tea? Quickly declining she got another cup of the precious delicious liquid that already rivaled her love of banana pudding and muffins, just as it rivaled Naruto's love of ramen noodles. This greatly amused Naruto, who took the tea back to the kitchen, forgetting to tell Hanabi to pace herself. And as it turned out the girl loved the taste of the sake, if half of the bottle being gone when he returned was any indication. Hey Hanabi-chan I have the new Princess Gale movie if you want to watch it with me. Naruto exclaimed already going and starting it before she could even answer. She would have told him yes anyway, so she just kept drinking like he said she could, and the more she did the better it tasted. She began feeling so great too, like everything was warm and fuzzy, and her vision was getting dizzy for once in her life. It was surreal. And then the movie started, Naruto plopping down and drinking straight from the bottle, paying heed to no form of etiquette. If he knew how much she had already drank, he paid it no attention. He just watched a movie with her, eventually bringing her another bottle after he finished his and got another for himself. She didn't know how long they sat there and watched a high-budget film or how long she watched Naruto out of the corner of her eye. He didn't seem to even know she was doing it but just kept a small smile the entire time that hadn't been there before. 
When he had opened his front door, he looked tired and maybe even miserable. Now he looked more like himself, even if she didn't know him that well, besides what her sister told her about for years. Then the movie hit a romantic scene, with two of the heroes kissing one another, passionately showing their love for one another. It had been mostly action with a little humor until now, and Hanabi could honestly say she liked the movie. Maybe even loved it. But now, she wasn't watching the movie anymore. She was watching Naruto, and not out of the corner of her eye. He only noticed her stare after about 30 seconds, and smiling at her he asked. Oh you want some more sake or something Hanabi-chan? Feel free to get some I don't mind. I. Naruto honestly wasn't expecting the girl to take the something and feel free to get some part and apply it to his lips, but that indeed is what she did. The kiss was actually pretty innocent, Hanabi not knowing to stick her tongue in his mouth or anything, but it was still surprising nonetheless. What was even more surprising were the sparks that flew when their lips met, and the look in her exotic lavender eyes as they met his own sapphires. Let it be said that Naruto wasn't a pervert and hoping for something like this to happen, but it indeed just had. He had a cute girl a little younger than himself, who obviously liked him, was stronger than him and Tajutsu, was on his team apparently, and they were both pretty drunk. Especially her, although Naruto had been sure to tell her to slow down, or she'd pass out. But nevertheless, in this situation Naruto could do two things, accept her advance or reject her. And as an attention and love starved pariah of his village, the answer was pretty obvious. Cupping the side of the Hugh gas pretty face, Naruto blushing red stuck his tongue into her mouth, surprising her and inevitably causing her to moan. Their tongues danced around each other's, and Naruto could smell the scent of the pink flower she had in her shoulder-length hair as the kiss intensified further. Naruto didn't know why, but this bite-sized girl turned him on more than any other, and he felt the need to have her on top of him, and so he pulled her clothes as he laid back on his couch, never breaking the lip lock. His member was as hard as steel as it pressed into her soft backside, practically begging to enter her and ravish her insides. They both refused to let each other up for air and were breathing heavily on each other as Hanabi grabbed the back of his head and Naruto grabbed her ass which she loved. She could feel his penis pushing into her body, but it didn't bother her much at all. She had seen plenty of penises before since her Byakugan offered her X-ray vision, but she had never felt one before. This was large, thick and hard, and the heat in her belly had spread throughout all of her body, especially in between her legs. Although she was drunk, she knew that after kissing Naruto for so long, since he hadn't tried to have intercourse with her yet, then he must have been waiting for her to take things further. She honestly was too inebriated to be afraid, but since she had no experience, she didn't really know what to do to take things further. But she remembered one thing she overheard from an older branch member once, about how she could get her husband to do anything with the skilled use of her tongue. It was after a brief internal struggle on whether or not to do it that she decided to and struggled to break the kiss with Naruto who had her in a death grip and he grinded his length into her. Seeing the flustered boy's confused and pouty face, she smirked a little knowing that after this Naruto would be whipped as she heard the woman say and getting off of him lightheaded she didn't hesitate to act. H. Hanabi Haim what are you? Her hands at the hem of his pants, she struggled a little, but Naruto slid them off not looking a gift horse in the mouth. And what a gift, Hanabi's mouth. Slurp slurp slurp. A H H H Kami Hanabi don't stop. Slurp 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 slurp. Naruto's eyes rolled into the back of his head as Hanabi channeled chakra to her tongue itself, wrapping it around the tip of his shaft and sucking with all her might while twisting her head. This was the trademark Yuga clan blowjob, and her execution was flawless regardless of her lack of experience. The chakra would conform perfectly to his member, which would prevent her teeth from grazing his shaft, even if it was her first time doing this. This meant that it was all pleasure, and Naruto was turning into putty in her hands. About a minute and a half of loud moaning later, Naruto's manhood began twitching madly as if it was having a seizure, and Hanabi wondered what was wrong with it. And then the flood came. Ah, Aya. Naruto growled as he grabbed her head with his hands, pumping it up and down on his length as his seed erupted into her mouth making her gag. The sound only made it better, and even when she tried to rise up, he kept her head firmly in place, letting the rest of his seed explode into her mouth as his lust clouded his mind. Only letting some of it spill, Hanabi actually drank the pints of jizz loving how it tasted like honey sake and salty milk, an interesting flavor. As Naruto came down from cloud 9, he was absolutely horrified as Hanabi lifted up her head, knowing he had messed up again by forcing her head down. He was surprised when she looked at him with a deep lustful gaze filled with longing, as if pleasing him had pleased her too. Then she opened her mouth and showed him the remaining seed and then swallowed it before taking his member into her mouth again. She wanted more of his seed for some reason, a when she swallowed it, a pleasurable euphoria had flooded her body, as if she had gained energy itself from the thick load. Naruto didn't know how many times he came inside of Hanabi's mouth, three times or seven, he didn't know. 
What he did know was that she was all his from now on, and he was ready to take her. It was with this intention that he all but ripped of her light orange kimono, musing that she liked his favorite color too. She just might be perfect. Attacking the girl's tight moist foods with his tongue while massaging her small breasts with his Rasengan stage 1 fondling technique, he found out that Hanabi was definitely a screamer. Music to his ears. She came so much from his combined assault that eventually Naruto's face was drenched, as he continued even when she screamed and moaned that she had to pee sadly. He knew what that really meant though, as Icha Icha may well be the Kama Sutra. He didn't even wait to line up his member with her folds and tear into her, just as she started squirting all over the place, and he didn't last a minute in her right slick self, before he nuked her womb with so much seed it exploded from her all over the place. The two of them painted for the longest time, Naruto hilted inside of her, and not even pulling out after the high came down. She didn't say a word, she just looked at him for the longest time, and then buried her head in his chest while he cradled her. Now Satsuka's words didn't sting him so much anymore, as he found someone who would actually appreciate him and love him like he wanted. And they stayed like that for the longest time, even watching the Princess Gale movie again when it replayed since they stopped watching halfway through. It had a happy ending. 3 hours later. Arriving more than a little late to training ground 7 with his new girlfriend after an interesting shower with her, Naruto tried his best not to stand too close or just outright cuff her to his side as Kakashi and Sakura took notice of them. And Naruto where have you been I've been worried sick about you. Kakashi sensei too. Rubbing the back of his head with a foxy smile he told her. Sorry about that Sakura-chan. I haven't been feeling so hot after. What happened with Sasuke? I'm even searching for him for him right now as we speak, but I haven't found anything yet. The demonstrator crow appeared out of nowhere next to him and flew off amazing everyone. Then Sakura said. What was that, a summoning jutsu? Then Naruto answered her by transforming into a crow himself, flying next to her and shifting back into his regular form. It's a transformation I created. Flying is amazing by the way, I just wish I could find. The team. Naruto don't blame yourself for what happened, Sasuke was bound to leave anyway. You know of his ambition. I tried to get him to change, but ultimately I failed you both. If anyone's responsible, it's me and me alone. Understand Kakashi consoled him to no avail. It was all his fault, and the only consolation he got was the fact that he stopped her from being hunted by every great nation that found out she was missing. The last Ichiha would be a top priority target, probably as much as Naruto would be if he ventured out on his own with his father's identity being public knowledge. They'd either kill him and study his body, kidnap him and use him to procreate, or sell him off like livestock to the highest bidder. He wasn't angry at all at Satsuki, on the contrary he was worried sick. But he couldn't lie that the sting of her abandonment had made him feel the deepest of hatred and rage at her for a short while. But if he gave in to that, he might as well have hated the leaf too. And he had Hanabi now, who even now was just watching him like she had been doing since earlier. She may have been a few years younger, but Naruto saw a beautiful young lady that would be a perfect wife for him. It was just troublesome that they would have to keep it a secret for a few years. Don't worry Kakashi, everyone makes their own way and choice, and. He's no different. I just hope he finds what he's looking for, because I know it ain't friendship. Maybe I can find him and bring him back someday, but it'll still be up to him in the end. But he might just kill Itachi and come back himself, who knows. Naruto still disliked calling her him, but he still pulled through. He honestly just wanted to drop the discussion, but then a teary-eyed Sakura asked him in desperation. Naruto please don't give up on him. I beg you. Promise me you'll bring him back. I don't know how but. I know you're the only person who can. Naruto couldn't help but stare wide eyes at her naivety, as even if he did bring her back Sakura wouldn't get her knight in shining armor. Satsuki was a girl, but nevertheless he knew she was right. He was the only one who could actually bring her back willingly, and so with a nod of his head more to himself than her, he promised. But what he damn sure wasn't going to do was shirk his training and goals to run behind her. When she pierced his heart, she had done so both physically and emotionally, and while Naruto didn't hate her, it was hard to stay infatuated with someone like that. He could just imagine if his wife one day had came home and stabbed him in anger after telling him how she hated him. Yeah, like someone would really still run after that crazy ass person with all of their existence and happiness at stake. Oh, and you guys remember Hanabi right she's in our team now, so how about we go out for something to eat and you guys can get to know her. Naruto suggested smiling brightly and genuinely surprising everyone with how happy he was. They expected him to be more somber, but when he mentioned her his face lit up like they had never seen before. Kakashi, growing suspicious, decided to keep quiet and observe the two of them closely, and said. That's a fine idea Naruto. After we eat and relax a bit we can begin training again, and I'll be sure to help each of you where you need it the most. 
especially you Sakura, and I've yet to gauge Naruto and Hanabi's full strength, so we'll be sparring first. By the way Naruto, thank you for giving Sakura the sword and books earlier, she just showed me a Jinjutsu she created the other day. I think she's a natural genius at it, and she's becoming a fine Kinoichi. Really Sakura-chan show me show me. Naruto loudly pleaded looking more than a little excited. Blushing a little from all the attention Sakura said. Okay. Here it goes. Going through a few hand seals away the flower petals surrounded her, obscuring her movement from Naruto's vision. Then in a burst of speed she disappeared into a shunshin, reappearing behind Naruto with her kadachi drawn. She was panting a little though, and Naruto knew she needed much more stamina to really utilize the body flicker. But the Jinjutsu flicker combination was sexy dangerous. That was great Sakura-chan. Just keep practicing and making new jutsu, and you'll be just as strong as any one of us before you know it. Believe it and achieve it Databeo. Thanks Naruto. She replied smiling despite her tired posture. Alright guys let's go. The Akamichi place has the best barbecue in town, and some pretty good ramen too. Everything's all on me. And so the new Team 7 set out, chatting with Sakura talking to Hanabi the entire way, trying to learn more about the other girl on Team 7. Kakashi seems to be trying to make amends with Naruto, but the blonde just pulled out a sake bottle and, mostly kept to himself. At least as far as Kakashi went. The Jonin almost found himself wishing that Naruto would just outright hate him, because his silence was ten times worse. It was like the blonde saw him as less than nothing, not even worth the trouble to get emo over. It sting him deeply. After a fun time at the Akamichi restaurant, Team 7 returning to the training ground actually started off with meditation surprisingly, which Naruto suggested they do before beginning. After that, Kakashi creating a clone for Sakura faced off against Naruto and Hanabi, although Naruto kept a majority of his skill hidden as usual. At this point, he didn't care about learning from Kakashi. It was too late, and he honestly didn't want the man to ever think he helped in any way when Naruto accomplished his dreams. Naruto did enjoy watching Hanabi fight though, and he promised to himself he'd always protect her. Everything wasn't perfect in his life, but at least he had people to love and hold precious. Especially Hanabi. One week later. As Hitsuki Achiha killed her fifth and largest group of bandits yet, she didn't even bat an eye at their mutilated corpses that stank of the fear they felt in their final moments. She knew what she had to do to kill Itachi now, and this was only preparation for what was to come. She could still feel Naruto inside her, the warmth of his embrace when they made love that fateful night. She missed him so much, she couldn't describe how much. But she did. She yearned for him, for him to be there to see his child grow and become the first Ichiha Hokage. She hadn't had her period although it was that time, and she had been feeling so nauseous lately, and not from thinking of Naruto. That's all she thought about. Naruto. Or Itachi, but he would be gone soon, and she would. She didn't really know for sure what came after Itachi, but she knew that she had to finish him and do it soon. Her and Naruto's child was growing within her, and if she wanted her baby to live, then she'd finally have to kill her heart. She had been hesitant in going to the small village ahead for a while now, but what else was there? She'd have to kill all of them, then Itachi would come. And then it'd end. Don't worry Naruto-kun, I won't fail you. I love you Naruto-kun. She chanted to herself as her unborn child was the only thing that kept her from going completely insane the tears still fell. Meanwhile in K-O-N-O-H-A. You need to focus Naruto-san, where's your mind at? Center yourself and breathe. Naruto's new sensei Yugao chided him as he moved the Kubakirabacho to block her horizontal swing. He wasn't entirely sure why, but he had been having a bad feeling I'm his gut for a while now. Hanabi had been coming over every day now for their early training and had been doing so ever since Jiji had installed privacy seals all around Naruto's home. This meant not even the Byakugan could see inside and no one could hear her screams. It was kind of weird how he had been with the Hyuga heiress and the Ichiha heiress, but he definitely was digging Hanabi. She was his sexy little firecracker, that's what he called her. And she acted like she hated it, but he knew better. She loved it. He hadn't given up on finding Satsuki though, in fact he still had transformed clones spying around every day. Just not hundreds of them, but more like ten well-placed ones that looked like flies. He had gotten the idea from Shino, who he hung out with occasionally. He had flies in the Hokage mansion, village gates, and Anbu headquarters, listening in on everything. That didn't mean they always survived though, as he found out that more than a few shinobi either just hated bugs or were extremely thorough. He was patiently waiting, and he knew eventually something had to show up. What he really needed to do was find that Danzo person, but since there was a council meeting soon he hoped that the Warhawk was present. Then his Konoha network would be complete. That's it for today guys. I will stop here, I hope did you enjoyed this video, if you do please leave a like share and subscribe for more amazing part of this video. And the important thing is don't forget to check it out author of this series. 
Thanks for watching guys. Take care until then see you in next one.